Now, I'll talk about what we produce now. We have a standard grade, a standard, a standard, uh, no, I should, I should not say standard. We have been producing uh, uh, wheat jam extract called wheat pro 1240. 240 signify the standardized optic, uh, optic concentration. So OD 240 and H and G grades. This, uh, this is a, for general purpose. This is for his tag protein. This is GSD tag protein. I'll explain how G H and G are differentiated. Then for labeling purpose, like in NMR, you may want you may want to selectively uh, label your protein, or you may want to label the all protein, uh, all the amino acid. Then we we have a special wheat and extract from which amino acids have been removed, and we call it wheat two to forty. And again, we have a general purpose uh, two to forty. H and G grade. But now we have high performance grade. High performance means high yields. And when you use high yield grade, and we call it Wipro 7 to 40, 7 to 40, H from 1 to 7, like a jumbo jet, that's the image. So you, you suddenly have large yield. So this is a high yield area. And in a by layer method, if you use the, the, the high performance grade, you can double the yield of your protein. So this is what we have now. And his, uh, the H grade or, or uh, H grade or G grade of the, the wheat gem extract is, uh, work like this. When you look at the, the standard or, or straight wheat gem extract, you see lots of background due to the uh, endogenous proteins contained in the wheat gem. But and the some proteins may compete with the adsorption site when you want affinity purification. But if you remove them beforehand, now you have a very clean background. So for histamine protein, you can improve the purity drastically. In this case, up to 70%. You do the same for GST tags, and now your purity can go up to 82% with a very clean background. This is the difference between uh, H, G, and the standard grade. So before, uh, our list of all the regions are very, very simple. It's all black letters. But we now have more. And then this whole chart looks more complicated, but it's not as bad as it looks. We have two kinds of template. We have uh, reagents for transcription and reagents for translation. Actually, this is a translation machinery and translation buffer, and also translation reagent for labeling uh, purpose. And we have a small kit. This is a, this is a small kit uh, which can be used to express uh, eight reactions. If it, and it contains all the vector uh, and, and the PCR products, uh, PCR primers, and it comes with a positive control also. So if you really want to see whether your, your gene of interest can be expressed in the region system or not, this is a good start. You just use a small kit and express it by hand. Then we have a larger kit, with, uh, and the size of the kit is enough to run one campaign with this machine, or you can do the same thing manually. And we now have also kits for labeling with uh, stable isotope, different stable isotope, N15, C13, or uh, deuterium expression. Now, the, the, uh, when, when you do, whether it's your R&D or do, do uh, further advanced R&D, the most important thing you have to be concerned about is the cost, because the research budget is not infinite. So let's look at how the uh, yield improve uh, from uh, in our system. We, before, we had this 1240, it's a standard which an extract. And the bilayer method is a kind of starting point, which is used for both GT2 and gen decoder. And uh, uh, in that case, when you look at the yield, the, more, the, the important number is how much protein can be, can be made from unit volume of which an extract. 
that number is important because we term extract is the cost factor. 70, sometimes 80% of the cost is the cost of we term extract. So uh, this is the number of milligram protein, crude protein produced per milliliter of 240 we term extract. When it's bilayer and, and 1240 we term extract, in the case of GFP, for example, you can produce 2 milligram per milliliter. If you use 7 to 40, this high performance grade, this number jumps, doubles again. If you change the transition reaction method, it's called repeat batch, used for proteins, this big robot, your yield also doubles. So far, so good. But then, when you move to the small robot right there, and use a filter and feed method, and you just use the, the tradition, uh, conventional which gem extract and change the, uh, the transition buffer every 30 minutes. In 24 hours, you produce 4 milligrams per milliliter. So what? Well, can can you improve further? Yes. If you run that for 48 hours, you can produce up to 80 milligrams per milliliter of which gem extract. Now things are getting better and better. If you use high yield uh, wheat gem extract, 24 hours, 30 minutes transition uh, buffer replenishment, messenger RNA replenishment, you get 8 milligram. But if you make the machine busier, so they work all the time, every 15 minutes, they replenish messenger RNA and transition buffer, your production goes up to 13 milligram. Let's continue this to 48 hours. And finally, if you run the machine for 48 hours, and every 15 minutes, machine replenishes transition buffer and messenger RNA, you, you can produce 20 milligram per milliliter of which I'm extra. So very modest, two milligram per milliliter goes all the way to 20 milligram per milliliter. That's what we have now. Next. So look at this one. Yield, yield goes higher from 2 mg per milliliter to 20 mg per milliliter. What happened to the cost? Well, I, I took the published price of a, of a reagent, and, and in this case, it's unlabeled, unlabeled uh, amino acid. So I, I, I took the uh, published, uh, uh, published price list. Then if you use a bilayer method, and uh, conventional with an extract for 20 hours, you pay about 200 to $300 per milligram of crude protein. In this case, it's like a DHFR or GFP type of protein. If you uh, use that machine and don't change the with an extract and change the buffer, transition buffer, uh, and the replenish messenger RNA every 30 minutes, the price come, uh, the cost price comes down to 100 150 dollar level per milligram you continue the effort until you have this uh, the uh, filter and feed method with high performance we term run it 48 hours and change change uh, replenish the buffer and messenger RNA every 15 minutes machine is very busy and it paid off you got 50 bucks per milligram it's good. It, that's the news. So as your protein yield goes higher, your, your, your protein production cost gets lower. And even with label amino acid, cost comes down like this. This is important because I said every 15 minutes or 30 minutes, you are replenishing uh, amino acid, right? Transition buffer, which contains also amino acid. So, if you use a labeled amino acid, which is very ex expensive, our concern was price may come down but go up if you are replenishing the transition buffer. But in, according to calculation, that's not the case. So we are happy to see this trend. 